This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Soul CBD Oils. I just want to let you guys know about this. If you are listening to this podcast, you probably understand the power of CBD oil. It is completely legal in all 50 states. What's illegal, but I think it's going to become legal at some point, is the THC, and that is the chemical component that gets people high. But listen to our show with Rick Simpson, episode 424, and you'll learn the power of CBD and the cannabis plant. It is the most powerful plant on the planet, and people use it for a variety of different ailments, for disease prevention. People use it to get over their seizures. It's the most powerful plant on the entire planet. It. And I'm really, really happy to be finally connected up with a company that I stand behind. I've met the founder. He's a friend of ours, friends of the show, Larry Ostrowski from Be Well Buzz. And his CBD is super, super powerful. They have scientists on their staff that do all the research. So check that out at extremehealthradio.com slash 490. And both of these products are available in our store as well. In the 1950s, Dr. Joanna Budwig had a 90% success rate curing people of cancer using fresh pressed flax oil and cottage cheese. The combination of dairy protein with unoxidized flax oil was able to restore oxygen transfer. It is now well known the cells of our bodies require unoxidized omega-3 and 6 seed oils to both attract and absorb oxygen. For the first time, there are seed oils with virtually zero oxidation even after one year at room temperature. All other, quote, cold-pressed seed oils are structurally damaged and significantly oxidized by the time you consume them. Andrea's seed oils retain the correct shape, electron content, and information that is quickly communicated to all the cells in your body. By taking these sacred seed oils, your whole body will begin to use oxygen as the creator designed it. Now combine this with our Life Force Enhanced One World Whey Protein, and you have a winning combination to confer energy and health like never before. Click on the five seed oil banner right here on ExtremeHealthRadio.com. That's ExtremeHealthRadio.com. Today, we're going to be talking about magnetism. Does magnetism help your health? Does it affect your cells? Does it affect your blood flow? Can it help with healing the body of certain, or can it help the body heal itself? We don't know these uh, answers to these questions. So we're going to be talking with Dr. Dean Bonley today. Uh, I'll introduce him in just a second. This is episode 491. So if you guys want to listen to the uh, to the show or check out the actual show page for today's show, you can just go to extremehealthradio.com slash 491. And uh, just so you know, we do broadcast three days a week and uh, doing a lot of shows. Uh, as you can tell, this is episode 491. So if you want to make sure that you get access to all the shows, uh, probably the best way to do that is texting the word get healthy to 33444. And you can do that right there on your cell phone. That is get healthy to 33444. That way you will be uh, kept up to date with all the shows that we are doing on a weekly basis. So um, you can do that quite easily. And we do broadcast Monday, Tuesday, and Friday every week. And our newsletters come out Monday and Friday of every week. So you can look forward to those and we'll keep you up to date on all the cool stuff that's going on here at Extreme Health Radio. Uh, today we've got Dr. Dean Bonley and he uh, graduated with honors from Loma Linda University back in 1962. And he's widely recognized as a researcher, inventor, consultant, lecturer on biomagnetism. He's, let's see, he's been the president of North, let's see, North American Academy of Magnetic Therapy. He's taught courses in magnetic treatment and for the integrative medicine postdoctoral degree offered by Capital University in Washington, D.C. Let me just go ahead and turn this off. And let's see, let's turn his microphone on. Thank you so much, Doc, for uh, being on the show today. Hi, Justin. It's a pleasure. Uh, you're a little bit weak. I couldn't hear you through that whole intro. So oh, okay. uh, you may want to turn up the volume a little bit on yours. Okay, okay. excellent. Can you hear me okay right now? Pretty good now, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, we have a little issue with our soundboard, so uh, hopefully that came through okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to have you on the show. We've uh, I've known about your work for a long, long time, and you've been, um, it says here, been doing the majority of your research and your work for the last 20 years in, um, in magnetism. That's correct. Uh, 27 years now. 
Wow, 27 years in magnetism. That is amazing. How did you get initially uh, involved um, in studying this? Well, I went to a lecture at the Optimus Club uh, by a doctor from the university who was lecturing on the decrease in the Earth's magnetic field. And I thought, could this really be true? So being a scientist, I went to the a library and read everything there was on magnetism and then to the medical library and everything that uh, anybody had written on uh, magnetism in the body and uh, shall we call it biomagnetism uh-huh. and I was amazed to find that true uh, the man was correct the uh, uh, earth magnetic field was depleting at a fairly rapid rate now about 7% per 100, per year, 100 years and then uh, the interesting thing was the articles that was written in medical literature about the effects of magnetism on the human body uh, were very varied. Nobody agreed with anybody else. Mm. And they had a lot of theories, which being a scientist I knew didn't hold much water. So I thought, let's check into this. And in the place where I started, I thought, well, you know, in reading the articles, they were all using all different kinds of magnetic fields. And, okay. and I said, well, that's uh, that's not scientific. You need to, uh, if you're talking about decreasing Earth magnetic field, you got to make an Earth magnetic field. Mm-hmm. And so that's where we started. We made an Earth magnetic field and exposed it to an older gentleman. He was 70 years old, had extreme arthritis. And in three months, he was well. It was... Uh, pretty amazing. So we thought, boy, this has a lot more effect than we ever dreamed it would. Mm-hmm. So that's how we got started. That's interesting. What is um, what is the the bipolar? Because I know with magnets, there's bipolar fields, there's the unidirectional fields, and I know you've spoken about bipolar fields, and apparently bipol- bipolar fields are, are the wrong direction of magnetism, isn't it? Well, not exactly. It's a little more complicated than that. The a bipolar field is a magnetic field going both directions, uh-huh. whereas the Earth magnetic field is going one direction, coming out of the sky and going into the Earth okay. in the northern hemisphere. And so that is the, what's natural to the body. When you have a bipolar field, it is not natural to the body and sets off an emergency response. And that emergency response is identical to that of acupuncture. So there's a lot of people using magnets and doing acupuncture when they don't even know they are doing it. Mm, that's interesting. So the bipolar field, does that? what kind of impact on the body does that have versus the unidirectional? Bipolar field increases blood flow, it increases electrical flow to the area where you have the magnet. And that, of course, is good on short term, but because you're increasing the electricity flow, you're actually... Uh, stealing from one place to uh, put it somewhere else. In other words, robbing Peter to pay Paul. And that's uh, a problem if you use too much. See, way back in 1964, I took a course in acupuncture from a Chinese MD. And the uh, one of the things he continually uh, uh, harped about, if you want to call it that, is <laughs> don't use them more... Uh, you don't do acupuncture more than an hour a week or you'll deplete the chi and you'll get less and less response. Okay. And so chi being vitality. And uh, that's when I saw what was going on here with all the different articles r- written about uh, magnetism and its effects. I could see that they were having short-term effect and uh, if used too much, they were losing their effect altogether. That's interesting. That's interesting. So how long have people been uh, involved in using magnetic therapies? Has it just been since the... since? the beginning of time, have people always known about magnetic therapies and things? Yeah, the Chinese were the first to start using magnetism in, you might say, modern times. Before that, uh, Aristotle and, and some of the old Greeks used what they call lodestones, which are bipolar fields, mm-hmm. and uh, Socrates. And, and the, uh, so they were getting, they were playing with it, and then there was Mesmer who was using, using it, and uh, these are all bipolar fields in each case. 
So they're all bipolar fields. Yeah, interesting. Um, there's that famous quote by Nikola Tesla that says, uh, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. It's that kind of famous quote by Nikola Tesla. He seemed to be pretty switched on to all of this stuff, too. Well, he was a genius, as you know. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. So um, tell me a little bit about the uh, Lamar frequency formula. In one of your lectures, you you mentioned that, and I thought that was really interesting. It's called the Lamar frequency formula. Um, talk a little bit about what that does. Okay, well, uh, when I first got involved in this, I didn't know what was uh, going on, how actually the magnetism was affecting the atoms of the body and the cells and the chemistry of the body, nor did anybody else. And most of them still don't know. But uh, in studying into it, I found a formula in physics called the Lamar formula. Mm -hmm. That's L-A-M-A-R. And it simply says if you put a hydrogen atom in a magnetic field and increase the magnetic field, you'll increase the orbital velocity on the valence electron orbiting around the nucleus of the atom. Now, why is that important? Because the formula says it leads to precession or wobble or vibration. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it does that is because it has a much higher charge. You see, it's go you have that little electron going through a more dense magnetic field and at a higher speed, so the charge on it goes way up. And that higher charge then leads to it being attracted and, and repelled from other electrons and protons at a greater intensity. So you've got a vibration, I might say, in a, in a way. It's something like heating a uh, solution to make a chemical reaction happen because mm. you increase the molecular action. Now, the end result of the Lamar formula is that you get electron transfer. That's when one electron and goes around the atom, another nucleus of another atom mm -hmm. to make a molecule and two atoms joining to make a molecule and multiple molecules, which in turn you make enzymes and tissue and everything else on that basis. So it's the basis of all life is the sharing of electrons by atoms. Okay, so when the atoms are able to share their electrons um, more easily, then um, eventually what happens is that those can start making um, molecules and molecules make cells and all of these things, and then it eventually comes up to just a, a body that works better. That's right. So this becomes a catalyst to all, the, to all of the chemical reactions in the body. And this is brought out in our research at Johns Hopkins Biophysics Lab where they found that we actually increased gene expression on over 2,000 genes. In other words, the genes were making more RNA, ribonucleic acids, which is the basis of life, of course. So that's an example. They found that we were actually the, the uh, in the petri dishes, which they were testing cells. Mm -hmm. They found that the cells were making more ATP. ATP is the catalyst for most of the chemical reactions in the body. So this is just basic right at the beginning. By increasing the unidirectional field, you get all of these things happening because you're charging up the valence electrons and causing electron transfer. That's interesting. So in that study, um, were they so they were exposing the Petri dish to a certain type of magnetic field? A unidirectional magnetic field. A unidirectional. You know, it's interesting. I just ran across a study before this show. Maybe you can shed some light on it. Um, because I'm guessing that in this study, uh, they're not using the right or the correct field. And um, this comes from, uh, I'll put a link to the show or to this study, sciencebasedmedicine.org. And it says, uh, just a little quote, it says, physicist, I can't pronounce this guy's name, wrong Jia Tao K. Huang took donated blood and then measured its viscosity in a small tube used for that purpose. They then applied a 1.3 Tesla magnetic field to the tube. This is about the strength of the magnetic of the magnetic field used in a typical MRI scanner. With the field aligned with the direction of the blood, I'm sorry, with the field aligned with the direction of the blood flow for one minute, and found that the 
viscosity decreased of the blood by 20 to 30 percent and that lasted for two hours and so i'm not sure do you know what a 1.3 tesla magnetic field is yeah that would be about uh 1300 13,000 gauss pardon me 13,000 gauss 13,000 gauss and it doesn't say here i mean it says it 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 decreased the, the viscosity of the blood by 20 to 30 percent, but I'm wondering if that was a unidirectional magnet that they exposed this blood to or a, a bidirectional. Well, they probably didn't realize there was a difference, and so it was probably a bidirectional. Yeah, interesting, right? Um, yeah, because a study went on to, to further say that there's um, ferromagnetic. ferromagnetic um, iron in the cell, and that's what was being affected by the magnet. But in all the studies you've... Oh, that's, is that, that, we did experiments right off at the beginning, and we found that there was no attraction to very powerful magnetic fields uh, by the red blood cells. It's a different... Uh, you need magnetite, and that's not magnetite in there. Uh, and so we couldn't uh, have... We didn't decrease with a proper magnetic field, Okay. A unidirectional magnet, so we didn't decrease velocity whatsoever. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, gosh, there's probably been, I know in some of the talks you've done, you've done um, a lot of studies um, with regards to the strength of the typical magnets um, that are being used uh, in, in other and other studies and things, and these magnets aren't necessarily powerful enough, and the and the ones that you guys are, are working with are are way more powerful than than most anything else out there. Is that right? Well, only... Well, there's two things that we do. We have the magnetic pad, which puts out uh, three different strengths, 5 gauss, 10 gauss, and 20 gauss. Now, gauss is a measurement of magnetic field. And the Earth, to relate that, the Earth puts out a half a gauss. So we can go 10 times Earth, or we can go 20 or 40 times Earth. Now, that's with the magnetic pad that we use for home, we sell for home use. Mm -hmm. And it's a layer of magnets that goes under your mattress and increases the Earth's magnetic field by either 5, 10, or, or, or 40, 10, 20, or 40 times. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the one thing I invented. Another thing that I invented was a powerful magnetic field that puts out the level of magnetic field of an MRI. And but it is unidirectional, and it is going the proper direction through the magnetic, to the body, and so you get all these wonderful things happen. And that's the, the device that actually uh, spawns tissue regeneration, and that's what we uh, provided to the Johns Hopkins Biophysics Department a similar magnetic field, and that's what they did their research with. Hmm, so that helps with tissue regeneration. That's correct. That's interesting. Oh, wow. Because they found that it caused tissue differentia uh, stem cell differentiation and, and proliferation. Oh, that is so so interesting. And so that is, what what is that called as opposed to the regular um, uh, sl sleep mattress? That's called pads? a magnetic molecular energizer. How, how large is that? Is that a big pad, or what does that look like? No, no, no. It's a big device like an MRI. It's, it weighs 10,000 pounds. Oh, I see. I see. Now, an MRI is um, mostly, it's all magnetic, correct? It's actually radio frequencies plus magne uh, magne strong magnetic field. First of all, what you're doing is uh, increasing the what we call structuring of the water in the body so that the, you're getting long chains of water molecules rather than little uh, clusters of water molecules. Mm -hmm. And these uh, long chains then uh, act like violin strings, so when they send a radio frequency at, at the tissue, then you're getting a, you might say, a frequency back, and that's what you interpret as the water picture of the body. So each each tissue of the body has a different content of water, and so consequently you get different frequencies coming back from each tissue, and, and that's the picture that you get is the MRI picture. And so it's a water picture of the organs of the body. 
Oh, that is interesting. Gosh, this whole thing with magnetism is so fascinating because um, I, I suspect there's something there's something there and there's something obviously going on with um, people that use magnets. And But I suspect also that um, a lot of the, you know, devices or things that are out there um i i don't know i mean you would probably know but they just seem too weak right like those little um there's things people can wear around their wrist and all kinds of stuff like that but i i don't know how strong those things are well it wouldn't uh let's put it this way they're doing acupuncture with every one of those devices and the weaker they are then the less profound the acupuncture uh, but uh, they shouldn't be doing those things because they are depleting the chi and redirecting energy in the body. And you may have a place where through biofeedback, the brain knows the energy should be going. But because you're putting this artificial emergency there where that little magnet is, mm. then you will have a uh, redirection of the magnetic field. We need to get back into what's going on. When you put the little magnet there, you have the magnetic field going both ways. That's a bipolar field. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lamar formula that we talked about earlier about how we actually enhance electron transfer is a directional formula. And so you have to have the magnetic field going the same direction as the Earth magnetic field was going when the cell formed. Otherwise, you will have a decrease in, in the orbital velocity on the valence electron, which in turn will decrease the charge on the valence electron and decrease metabolism in the cell. So you're making less ATP, and so ATP running the sodium-potassium pump then won't be enough, so the charge on the cell wall goes down, and when that happens, then to biofeedback, the brain says, you've got a big problem here. You're gonna, those cells are not going to have enough oxygen to live. And so it rushes an electromagnetic field from the brain and increases the blood flow to increase the oxygen tension in the area, and that's how you get the acupuncture effect. Now, on short term, that works. Not bad. Long term, not good because you're creating an artificial emergency and taking energy away from other places that need it, and you're depleting the reserves. See, we run with a reserve of electrical potential mm -hmm. just in case we we're in an accident or some emergency, and we need that uh, those reserves to keep us from going into shock. So you're drawing down on your reserves every time you use a bipolar field. So a bipolar field can be okay. You just have to know how to use it and when to use it and um, and not necessarily use it every single day like you're talking about. Well, an hour a week is all you're allowed to do acupuncture. So yeah. that gives you a little parameter there in which you should be uh, thinking in when you're t using a um, uh, single magnet around on the body. That's interesting. Now, having said that, we do use magnets around on the body occasionally for certain things, but we make sure that they're sleeping on one of our magnetic pads at night because you regenerate the electrical producing capacity in the astrocyte cells of the brain very quickly on the magnetic pad. So you're running at a much higher voltage and you can... Uh, should we say, make up for the losses of using the bipolar field during the day quickly. Mm. A while back, um, there were some internet videos going around where people were talking about how to um, put magnets um, on the outside of your Vitamix blender. And they were talking about, um, you know, sort of ramping up your Vitamix blender and the drinks that you make with using magnetisms or magnetism on the outside of the blender. Um I have no idea what kind of magnets those are, but is it safe to say those were are, are typical magnets bipolar? And then I guess it would have the same effect of everything that you were just talking about. Well, it depends on the size of the magnet and, and you know what they were doing there. But uh, you could in, you could enhance some of the chemical reactions in there, and you could make and make them more active. Uh, we did a lot of experimenting with that, the amount of effect was very minimal. I can tell you that because uh, when you remove the magnet, of course, or remove the fluid out of the 
out of the blender, then uh, you're back to a Earth-type magnetic field. And so a lot of the, well, the orbital velocity goes down way back down to the to the Earth magnetic field. So you were you've talked a lot about in your lectures and things about how the magnetic field of the Earth has been decreasing. And you said I think it's right now at 0.5 Gauss, and it's been decreasing for I don't know hundreds or thousands of years. Um, so do you think that this is causing health issues in people? And uh, is is that kind of your idea behind that? I kind of my idea behind that is true because when we treat people with chronic fatigue we can get them over their their problem. And how how long has the earth been the magnetism been being depleted do you think? Well, we've been keeping a record since 1860. Uh-huh. And uh, the scientists there were sophisticated enough at that time to measure the earth magnetic field in several places on Earth so they could keep a record of it. And with that, then they've been keeping a record ever since. And so it's been uh, depleting. Now it's getting speeding up, but it's about 7, 7% in 100 years is where we're at now. 7% in but the last 100 years. This is, But this is a big deal because it's already depleted enough in the South Atlantic Mm-hmm. So that the sun's magnetic field, which is two thirds the strength of our present field here in the North America, is stronger than the magnetic field of the South Atlantic during the day. And so, when they're when the South Atlantic is uh, based to the sun, the sun's magnetic field pushes the uh, magnetic field of the Earth back into the crust of the Earth. And this is uh, very. Let's put it this way. <laughs> this is quite dramatic because that, that is our magnetosphere that is being created there in the South Atlantic, well, all through the Southern Hemisphere, which protects the ozone layer of the Earth. And so now when the uh, magnetosphere is pushed back into the crust of the Earth during the daytime, guess what? We have a huge hole in our ozone layer there now. And uh, that band of magnetism which we call the magnetosphere, is the band that goes into the North Atlantic, and consequently we have a hole in our ozone layer there too, and to the point where the seals are getting sunburned during the day now. Mm-hmm. And in conversation I had with uh, the uh, chief climatologist for Argentina, he said uh, the UV light... Uh, on the ice pack in uh, South Atlantic is the same as it is at the equator. So that's why the ice pack there is melting, and what, that's why the ice pack, the glaciers are melting in Greenland, because it's the same uh, loss of magnetosphere in both places. Hmm. And so you have much more intense UV light, UVA, UVB light. So we're we're looking at a, a phenomena that's already getting started, and NASA said that within 500 years we will be at zero. Well, then we have a major problem because during the daytime the sun's magnetic field will be stronger than ours, and so we'll have what you call a magnetic reversal during the day. During the night, our weak magnetic field will still be able to go out into the and to make the magnetic tail of the Earth. So you'll have two magnetic fields. You'll have the sun magnetic field during the day and, and the Earth magnetic field at night because that's the way it works. That's wild. Do we know, Dr. Bonley, why the Earth is decreasing in its magnetic field? Well, according to the uh, what happened when they did the deep-sea core sampling in the early 80s, they found that every about 600,000 years, we had a reversal of the Earth's magnetic field. And the, uh, they could tell this by measuring the magnetite crystals in the sediments of the major rivers where they were coring down. Mm. And interesting enough, they, every time there was a reversal, uh, there was a die-off of the radial irons, which are a very primitive uh, life source. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, 
hopefully we'll be more advanced and, and make our own uh, magnetic fields if it happens in the future. But we've got a, a long time to wait now, another 500 years or <laughs> 400 years or whatever it is. But yeah. they'll have more problems down in the South uh, Atlantic area than in the North Atlantic than they will before they'll have it here on the continent of the United States. Okay, so between now and 500 years when the mag- when the magnetic... Um, um, uh, frequency of the Earth is depleted. There's there's going to be more issues in the southern hemisphere from now until then than in the northern hemisphere. That is correct. It's not frequency, magnetic uh, yeah. flux. We call it flux or or power, magnetic power, or whatever. Okay. That's interesting. So um, so the reason why it's depleting is because every six hundred thousand years or so, uh, there's a, a a pole reversal. Is that what you said? Well, it's the sun's magnetic field overtakes the Earth's magnetic field during the daytime, yeah. Interesting. Wow. Uh, and I wonder, how long has it been um, since that happened? Are we are we close to that time happening? That's why NASA said 500 years. Okay, 500 years, yeah. Wow. They made that announcement in, in 05. In 05. Wow. So, let's see, where do we go from here? So... If this is slowly being depleted, and I think you said something um, in the last hundred years is depleted about seven percent. Um, right. So, what we're looking at now is for for people to start using magnetism um, as part of their daily life more. That's right, because as you as we talked about, it, it's a catalyst to your chemical reactions, so everything's going to work better. Uh, your immune system is going to be stronger. You're going to have uh, uh, more oxygen flowing in your blood. We did a study on that, 88 people, and we showed that they had a, a increased oxygen saturation in their blood that was significant. Wow. And uh, so it, we talk, many, many things are going to improve if you have a catalyst to all the chemistry. Your, your enzymes are going to be uh Improved. That's for your digestion. You're gonna, your hormones are going to be improved because you're enhancing the chemistry and endocrine glands. Mm. So all of these things are going to happen. So in that study, I was going to ask you about um, you know different studies that you've been a part of or different studies that you've looked at. Um, and that study of 88 people with the oxygen increase in their blood. Uh, what was the what was the the mechanism of the study? What did they do, and and what was um, what were the key parts of that study? Uh, that was a study where we had people exercising in a magnetic field. We made a, a what you call a horizontal magnetic field behind the exerciser, and we had a pulse oximeter on uh, tied to them. Uh, on their wrist, and so we could measure what was happening to the oxygen saturation in the blood uh, while they were exercised in a magnetic field and then without the magnetic field because we could remove the magnetic field. And uh, it was uh, quite dramatic. They Actually, the people exercising in the magnetic field had a 23% advantage over the people not in a magnetic field. Mm. Wow, that's interesting. So all all eighty eight people had increased oxygen oxygenation of their blood. That's right. Wow, that's that's really fascinating because when people, I mean, when people really study oxygenation, the work of Otto Warburg, and you start studying what oxygen does inside the body, we just did a whole show yesterday about ozone. Um, but increasing the oxygenation of the of the um, of the blood like that, I mean, you, you if you understand what that means, that that means a lot of really interesting health effects. That is correct. Mm-hmm. So you get that all night long while you're sleeping. So your recovery, uh, like we tested the Canadian decathlon team, and uh, they found that they had an improvement of seventy five. 75% increase uh, in recovery from their over-exercise. And we found the same thing with NFL quarterbacks that they they recovered overnight rather than all week long from the uh, their strenuous game on Sunday. Wow. So I'm, I'm always curious about those types of studies. How do they... Do, do, they, do, do they do the study in such a way where someone... Um, 
performs a certain exercise and typically they they always take three to four days to recover um, but then they do the same exercise um, in the controlled study in some way and then they take a lot less time to recover how are they studying the actual recovery of these uh, athletes well, we did multiple different exercises that they did uh-huh. and uh, and so we just kept a record of length of time to remove soreness and reach peak peak performance again that's interesting. Um, now, I'm curious about, uh, we talk a lot about on this show, and a lot of people are talking about it nowadays with the increase in cell phones and um, EMF and radiation, um, all this stuff, um, you know, telephone wires going over people's houses and connecting to houses and things. Um, how does the, how does magnetism and specifically uh, your, your pads, how do they affect um, EMF? In any way, or do they? They don't affect EMF because uh, electromagnetic fields will go right to a magnetic field, uh, like it wasn't there. Otherwise, we wouldn't have television. So it, all it does is bend the uh, direction of the electromagnetic field a little bit, okay. and that's really what's going on in the old uh, TVs. So, no, what we actually do, we treat a lot of people with electrical sensitivity, uh-huh. and amazingly, they get better. And the reason they get better, because as we talked about a little while ago, we enhance the function of the astrocyte cells in the brain, the chemistry in them, so that they're making a lot higher voltage. And so their signal to the body then is much stronger and the strongest signal wins, of course. Mm-hmm. So they have, say, a electromagnetic field coming in with a, a point, uh, zero 0.05, uh, shall we say, a voltage on the frequency. Mm-hmm. In other words, that's the variance in the frequency. Uh, and we provide a much higher uh, frequency, our voltage on our what we're applying to the body because the brain is making the frequencies for the body. We haven't even talked about that. See, uh, Dr. Becker found a lot of, uh, a long time ago in his book called Cross Currents. He did a great deal of research. He was a researcher at or, uh, New York State University. He found that we have a continuous flow of electricity to the body from the astrocyte cells in the brain to the periphery. And that's what the Chinese call qi or whatever. It's, it's, we call it vitality. Mm-hmm. And that electrical flow flows out on the swan cells on the outside of the nerves, which are semiconducting. And so it's very efficient. So let me and make sure. I, it's, so let me make sure I have that correct. So the the cells. Explain that again, because I want to make sure I understand that. The astrocyte cells in the brain convert chemical energy to electrical energy. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, the more efficient they are, the stronger the voltage they're putting out. In other words, the more power. Okay. So that means the this electrical flow that's flowing out from them to the periphery, we call it vitality, uh-huh. the purpose of which is to resonate the mitochondria and the different cells of the body and to enhance healing. Uh, that is the carrier frequency for the message frequency of the brain telling the cells what to do, what to divide into, what to become when they grow up. We're talking about the stem cells now, okay? Right, right. And he found that if if you uh, cut off the myelin sheath, uh, or the, the then the cells in the periphery wouldn't divide into what they were supposed to. All they got was more stem cells, and they wouldn't make uh, muscle cells and blood vessels and what have you. Mm. So anyhow, uh, the long and the short of this is we have a message frequency writing uh, on the carrier frequency, which is the resonance frequency, which resonates the tissues of the body to enhance the chemistry there. Mm. And that's why, that's the purpose of sleep. When you go to sleep at night, you start out in frequencies that are about 7 hertz, and to uh, hour to hour to two hour uh, cycle, you go down all the way below zero and back up again, 
not below zero, but below one and back up again. Because each tissue of the body resonates at a different frequency. And so consequently, the brain can target a specific organ of the body by sending that frequency out to them. And so that's the uh, purpose of sleep. Sleep is to uh, repair and and regenerate the tissues of the body. And if you don't get enough sleep, you have a real problem for regeneration and health. Now, interesting enough, that electricity that flows out to the periphery of the body comes back to the fascia, to the spinal cord, and back up the dura mater of the spinal cord and back up to the brain. So you actually have a closed circuit here. Oh, wow. On the way back, the cells signal the brain what it needs. We call that biofeedback. Okay. And there's a, a lot of devices uh, that people have invented trying to read the messages the cells are sending back to the brain to determine what's wrong in the tissue. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, goes back to the brain. The brain says, okay, we got a problem down in your left big toe. We need to send the frequency for the left big toe out and, and resonate that tissue and, and uh, send messages there to the cells there to repair the problem we've got. So that's how that whole electrical system works. That's so fascinating. There's um, so many people these days that are constantly, I think I see it a lot in like the fitness uh, niche where people are always talking about, um, you know, localizing exercises and doing all this. And they always talk about the body being a machine. And I, I always think of the body, I mean, just the way you described it right there is interesting because it, it seems as if the body is much more electric um, than it is biological. Um it's just, it's fascinating. All this stuff is going on and we don't even really feel it or know it, know what's happening or anything. Okay, there's a point we need to make here about exercise. You see, your bones and, and some of the ligaments actually produce electricity when you're uh, contracting and, and expanding them, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can actually make some of your uh, electricity to help out the brain by exercising. Ah, so it can go, it's a feedback, so it can go back to the brain and help make more. That's right. It goes back to the brain and then goes back out again. Wow, gosh, the body is so, it's like, you know, when people talk about us just being machines, I always cringe, you know. It's, I think the the body is so complex, and my gosh, that's just, it blows my mind all this stuff is going on. You know, that effect, I mean, it's called the piezoelectric effect. Effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Piezoelectric. Right. Piezoelectric effect. That's so interesting. Now, I wanted to ask you, we have on our bed, we have grounded bed sheets. Is there any conflict to have something like what you have and combine it with grounded bed sheets? Do you know if that's an issue? I, no, there's not a conflict. Uh, the problem is you, with your grounded bed sheet is that uh, if you're in an urban area, anywhere where you can get cell phone coverage, you're enhancing the frequencies, in other words, the voltage of those frequencies coming through your body by three times. We did research on that. And so the only time you want to use a grounding sheet is when you're way out in the country out of cell phone range. Uh, because you're essentially then the electricity and or the EMFs that are floating around are using you as a conduit to go back to the ground? That's right. It's acting as an aerial. Uh-huh. Ah, that's interesting. Well, they're not good. And people with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia have a really hard time trying to use a grounding sheet. I guess it also depends on the amount of dirty electricity that could be in the ground itself because a lot of now newer neighborhoods are putting all of their cables underneath the ground, and that can be an issue for people too. That could be a problem, but you've got to realize that all electricity flows back to the source through the ground. Uh -huh. like, I shouldn't say all. 70% of it flows back. If you look at your big power lines, you have three lines coming out and one line going back. Well, the rest of that uh, that isn't going back on the return line is going through the ground back to its source. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm. So maybe a no-go. Well, I guess it depends. It depends on where you are and uh, how conductive the ground is, where you are and where you live and um, all of that. Yeah, well, it's 
the concept was developed in uh, eastern Montana, and uh, was there wasn't cell phone coverage there, mm. and consequently, uh, it was very effective. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, but then they started using the urban, and there is problems because I I told them when they first started that thing, I wrote an article in one of the health magazines about it, and uh, all they said, "Oh, that can be." But uh, people were calling in and says, "I got this grounding sheet, and, and I feel terrible, a lot worse than I used to." And these are people with chronic fatigue, hmm. and these are people that their brain was unable to put out the stronger electromagnetic field to the body and so the brain was uh, you know suffering because it was being stressed because uh, it was being demanded to put out a higher uh, signal or stronger signal uh, from sleeping on the grounding sheet and yet it didn't have the ability to do that so they were getting headaches that's interesting yeah we had a guest on a while back uh, who does um, he was talking about uh, PEMF and he was talking about uh, the pulsed field, and he said that with the magnets, your body can get used to those magnets. And I know that you say the opposite. I'm curious what your what your take is on the pulsed versus like the yeah. He was yeah. He, he was uninformed. They they can get used to the bipolar fields because remember we talked about that. You you deplete the chi. Okay. But, and but the unidirectional field, we've had people in very powerful magnetic fields for actually months, and they just got better and smarter. So it's all dependent upon whether it's bipolar or unidirectional. So when people talk about magnets, it's you, you, your first thought has to be, what kind are they talking about? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So maybe, yeah, maybe, um, I'm curious, yeah, because he was talking about PEMF, and, um, and I'm wondering... Well, let's talk about PMFs for a minute. Yeah. Okay? I uh, did a lot of research on that early on because that was the big thing that was just coming out then. Mm-hmm. And I made very sophisticated uh, PEMF devices and run by computers. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we actually made a magnetic bed that that went through all, all the sleep cycle frequencies. and uh, But... Uh, Enhanced them so it was a stronger signal. Mm-hmm. And we found, interesting enough, that the body can only resonate a given tissue for a, a very short period of time, like 20 seconds, or, or if you increase the frequency, two minutes. So we had a very short window in which we could be treating people with a given frequency and without it going out of resonance. And so, uh, interesting enough, uh, the book came out by Pollock and his friend and uh, doing a survey of the magnetic uh, treatments in Eastern Europe. And these were the, uh, did a analysis of all the uh, written information and the different studies that were done there, mm-hmm. and it showed about 15 to 20 minutes is the maximum that a pimp field had any effect. Otherwise, after that, it had less effect. So uh, you're limited to a short healing period of time. It has benefits, and the benefits are simply this, that you actually are changing the polarities on the cell wall, so you get some cell flushing. You actually uh, do get some increase in uh, production of uh, ATP, a slight amount, and, but it's only temporary while you're doing that. So you have some benefit there, and you, because it is a foreign frequency to the body, you get the acupuncture effect, and primarily the benefit people are getting from pulse magnetic field is the acupuncture effect. You're creating an artificial emergency, and the artificial emergency makes the brain have to put out a stronger electromagnetic field, and that's fine on short term, but not on long term, because you deplete it. So you're saying then that the uh, the effects of the PEMF um, only are 
are there when you're on the machine or when you're on the mat or whatever no, it is. You, no, that's the flushing effect, yes. But the acupuncture effect lasts on for, can last for a month even, okay? Huh. Okay, so with the, with the magnetic pads, what happens when you get off of them? Is it, uh, does the same thing happen or is it different? No, no, because it's natural to the body. It's the same as the earth magnetic field, so you don't have a fall-off effect because you're not stimulating the brain t- from an emergency. Oh, uh, okay. Ah, interesting. So if somebody so the effects had- last all, So the effects last all day because you've enhanced the function of the astrocytes and cells in the brain to convert chemical ex- energy to electrical energy. So you build up. It's like a battery. You build up voltage for your whole day long run. Okay, so during the day, you're depleting your battery, your battery you're depleting your chi, uh, your life force, and then you get on the mat and you sleep, and then you restore all of that. That's exactly what's happening naturally without our magnetic pad, mm-hmm. only we just enhance that effect. That's you see, the dinosaurs were buried in the magnetic field of 300 gauss. We're down to a half a gauss. And the research that was done by Valerie Hunt, Dr. Hunt at UCLA, showed that a person can only last two or three hours without a magnetic field. Wow. How'd she figure that out? She had the physics department build what's called a mu cage out of mu metal, which is a metal that deflects magnetic fields, Mm -hmm. electromagnetic fields and magnetic fields. And she put two uh, young men in there that volunteered. She had them all wired up with the EKG, ECG, potentiometers, everything. Uh, so she could see what happened. And to her amazement, in the first uh, few minutes, they began to sob uncontrollably. And she says, what's wrong with you guys? And they said, we feel like we're falling apart. And uh, this went on, and they began to lose their feeling in their feet, and then their, muscle to, and their muscles in their legs no longer functioned. And, and it went off the body until it got to the heart, and the heart monitors said that they were in great stress. The heart was in great stress. Mm-hmm. And the brain was in stress, and so she had to take them out. And I talked to her about the experiment, and she yeah. said, if I'd left them in there another hour, they'd probably have been dead. That's what she said. Wow. Wow. And how long were they in there? Two to three hours, you said? Yeah, a couple hours. A couple hours. That's amazing. I watched a documentary where something similar was going on. They were talking about uh, this do- this documentary. I can't remember what it was called. Something. It was about EMF around the around the world. Uh, and they were citing some studies they did, um, you know, I think back in the 30s or something, where they were talking about the Schumann residents. Uh, and they were going and putting people underneath the ground in sort of like a cave, but it was a, it was an underground sort of bunker where they were conducting all the, all of these studies. And the people that were cut off from the Schumann residents were having the same sort of effects on their, on their health as well. Well, it wasn't that dramatic though. It was just poorer health. And yeah. the human resonance is a neutral resonance frequency for the body. Mm-hmm. It's between the the uh, daytime frequencies the brain puts out to run between nine and twelve hertz uh-huh. normally, and the night frequencies between seven and uh, and one, and so it's kind of neutral in between, and so you're getting uh, a very uh, low. Uh, frequency, and <laughs> that actually can help a little bit in health. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. If people are, I think I found the name of it. It it might be called resonance of beings or resonance of frequency. I think it's resonance of beings. Uh, it's a YouTube documentary. Uh, it's it's seven point eight three. Yeah, yeah. Um. You know, I wanted to ask you about your mats. Is there are there any issues with people like let's say someone has a pacemaker or metal plates in their knee if they've had surgeries, pins and things? Are there any issues? Two different with, things there. Well, two okay. different things. Anything that has a battery, it will interfere with the uh, battery and okay. it's, it's magnetic field, electromagnetic field it's putting out. So you don't want to use it with anything that has a battery in the body. As far as all the other things that are in the body, plates and screws and what have you, uh-huh. they're all non-magnetic, so it's not a problem. So a counterindication is a pacemaker or 
or something of that nature. Interesting. Now, I have some friends that, um, some doctor friends that own your mats, and they talk about um, chelation of heavy metals and things and its effect on the brain um, and using your mats. Um, and I think you mentioned in one of your lectures something called magno chelation. Is that the same thing? That's what they're talking about. That's what they're talking about. You see, the We've been trying for years to get the metals out of the brain, which cause disease. Uh, you get all the different brain problems, such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, and it goes on and on. Uh-huh. And chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, all of these things are caused from metals in the brain. And to get them out, it's very difficult because uh, the rest of the cells in the in the body are are dividing, and when they divide, it's easy to grab the metals out of those cells as they're dividing. But the brain cells, thankfully, aren't dividing; otherwise, we wouldn't have a metal have a memory. Pardon me, mm-hmm. wouldn't have a memory, and so it's very difficult to get those cleaned out, and they are. Chelation people have tried all kinds of different things to try and do that, and with some success, large doses of glutathione has been helpful, mm-hmm. helpful to poic acid and things like that, and uh, Q10, uh, but uh, they only are partially successful. Mm-hmm. We come along and said, look, we can do a better job of that. And the reason we knew we could do a better job of that when we were treating with the very powerful 10,000-pound electromagnet called MME, mm-hmm. we found that in two hours of treatment, they had a flood of toxic metals coming out of their brain because we were doing MS and we were just treating the brain. And so we thought, ah, well, let's give these people some DMSA and see if the symptoms of toxicity go away. And sure enough, they disappeared. And so we knew that we were flushing toxic metals out of the brain, and we were successful in treating with a large device, the Parkinson's and MS. Not in everybody, but most of the people. And the people we found that we weren't successful in had Lyme's disease. So uh, anyhow, back to what happens when we treat uh, when you lay down on our magnetic bed, the strongest one, you actually are increasing the production of ATP in the astrocyte cells and in the nerve cells. Uh, so you're getting then a much stronger function of the sodium potassium pump. Now, the sodium potassium pump runs on ATP, that's its energy. And normally we don't produce enough ATP mm-hmm. to run the sodium potassium efficiently enough to charge up the cell wall to 100 millivolts, which is necessary to force out the tox- toxic metals. When we actually, we've shown that we increase ATP production quite dramatically. That's one of the things we showed at, at uh, Johns Hopkins. And when you have that extra ATP to run the sodium potassium pump, you get the charge up above 100 millivolts and you force out the toxic metals Mm -hmm. into the lymph and into the bloodstream and uh, you're able to make these people recover. Wow. And so it should obviously be followed by, it should aid um, a a whole protocol, but what, what a cool thing. That's so great. Because a lot of people these days are so, you know, exposed to, Heavy metals, we're getting them everywhere. And I think primarily we're just talking with um, a nutritionist where we live, um, Nikki Moses, and she was talking about uh, copper and lead and uh, all of these things and, and copper pipes in people's homes and, um, you know, uh, uh, cookware people are cooking their food on. So heavy metals are everywhere. That's right. We used to use a lot of aluminum cookware, and, and that's a, that becomes a toxic metal too. Mm-hmm. So uh, we found that if we give the people DMSA uh, at bedtime for a couple months, and then the DMSA binds the metals as it comes out into the bloodstream, so it's easy for the kidneys to excrete it. You see, the kidneys will, by nature, conserve metals because it's not used to toxic ones, it's used to good ones. And so it tries to conserve metals, but once you 
bind the metal and make it into a sulfate, then it's, the kidneys automatically will excrete it. Ah, so uh, we give them DMSA, 500 milligrams at bedtime, and uh, they, they get well. So that's pretty simple, isn't it? That's great. So the kidneys store heavy metals. No, they just, the glomeruli in the kidneys will uh, read the blood and say, well, look, we need metals, and so it just doesn't excre- uh, excrete the uh, metals out, and they just recircle, uh, you know, circulate again. Uh, it keeps going around and around until they go into some other organ of the body. So you want to get them out of there so they don't get uh, redeposited somewhere else. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one of the thing- them and make them into sulfates. On um, on contraindications that we talked about a second ago, um, are there issues with people with mercury fillings or anything in their teeth with sleeping on on the magnetic beds? Is there any issue there? We thought there was to begin with, so we went back to a fellow who uh, was an expert in the field of uh, using an acetylometer to measure the mercury vapor in the mouth, uh-huh. and uh, we took. 23 people uh, and measured the mercury vapor in their mouth because they were chewing chewing gum and they had more than five fillings and we laid them on the magnetic bed and within five minutes there was no mercury vapor in their mouth. Whoa. Take them off the bed and keep on chewing the gum, mercury vapor came again. So what was happening, we were actually increasing the strength of the silver, so it was binding the mercury while laying on the bed. So we stopped telling people they had to take their their mercury fillings out while they're sleeping on the bed. Now, we tell them it's a good thing to get rid of because they're getting exposed to that mercury all day long. Right, right. But not while they're on the bed, they're not getting any exposure. Wow, isn't that is is it possible that the exposure could have, they could have been breathing it in? I guess not, right? Well, they're breathing in both cases. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Wow, what a crazy thing! That's so interesting. Gosh, this, the role of magnets is um, is fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. Are are there areas of this field that you're studying that you that you come across from time to time that that you didn't know that that um, continually surprise you? Well, the thing that it surprised us the most was the genetic, genetic things. Uh, uh, we didn't know that we could repair genes. And we found that certain genetic diseases are repairable with the powerful magnetic field. See, each gene is a little cyclic ring. Uh-huh. And it's a break in that ring that causes the genetic defects, uh, usually. And uh, so we're able to reconnect the ends of the break and and repair the genes that were uh, genetically defective. Wow, that's so. If it's affecting the genes, it's also affecting the mitochondria as well, and like you said, ATP and all of that. Uh, well, the genes are in the mitochondria and, and the production of uh, ribonucleic acid, and you know the whole thing. But uh, no, I. Exciting! Uh, what it can actually do. First of all, we did knock out mice where the g- genes have been uh, mechanically uh, damaged, mm-hmm. and in one week we completely repaired the uh, knockout mice so that they were normal uh, and normal genes again. And then we did a uh, a young lady that had congenital chronic hepatic fibrosis, which is uh, Number 14 chromosome is defective and the body rejects the liver. Mm-hmm. Well, in 17 hours, we repaired the liver so the genes were normal. So she actually had all her normal liver enzymes and had her, we tested, tested her a year later, same thing. She was completely uh, healed of it. And then we took some tumors, some different kinds of tumors, and found that we could repair the genetic defect in the cancer cell, so uh, certain types. So yeah, this is a big deal. Golly, that is crazy. So in the case of the lady that um, had, um, this, uh, was it cystic fibrosis, you said? Yeah, she had chronic 
hepatic cystic fibrosis, yeah. And in, in her case, uh, after the experiment was over, um, did she continually expose herself to magnetic therapies no. after? No. Really? No. Matter of fact, she went off at the end. I treated her 20, 21 hours, and then she went off to <laughs> New York and did the town with her boyfriend and then lived it up. Uh, <laughs> and came back to her original uh, internist that had her liver enzymes checked, and they were completely normal. Ah, that is interesting. Wow. And She's so, been on to working 12 hours a day ever since. Now, I wonder with someone like her, does it take, I wonder if it takes the body a long time to sort of regenerate new tissue and overcome that disease after. Not when you're in the MME. No. It, you super speed it. So that's part of what... In other words, in that powerful magnetic field, you speed everything up super. Gosh, that's so interesting. Wow. So I bet you're continually... So you're looking more these days in, into the genetic expression and all of that uh, in relation to... Uh, we are, but the thing we're really looking at... Right now, we finished a study on, on uh, low back because we found that we could regenerate the disc in the back. And so we did a low back pain study and came out very successfully. Was it uh, 87% of the people got considerably better. 87%, wow. And how long of a time? That was in two weeks. In two weeks, wow. You know, every night for two weeks. Uh-huh. Oh, they would lay on the mat for every single night for two weeks. And were they laying on your yeah, mat? No, your that was in the MME, the, the powerful machine. Oh, okay, okay. Wow. Also, we found with that, now we've done, uh, started a small study there, and we found that, that uh, what is it, there's only 18 in that study, uh-huh. that we can regenerate the heart muscle. And so people with congestive heart failure can come in and in two or three weeks uh, have a good heart again. Well, that would make a lot of sense, obviously, because everyone knows the heart's electrical. Um, but that's interesting, too. Golly. Um, now so that's, with that's our, that's our next project is doing that one. Are you- and uh, actually, another project we have is we can find on the magnetic pad that we can clean the uh, arteries out in the heart. Uh, just using uh, the strongest magnetic pad and, and DMSA, we can uh, remove the plaque. And we've proven that with angioscopes that we actually do remove the plaque out of the arteries. Wow. So that's another study we want to do just with the magnetic pads. Now that is really cool because people that have, I mean, I know a guy in our family that has um, seven, gosh, what does he have, seven stents in his heart? He's about 72, I think, 75 maybe. Uh, he's got seven stents in his heart. Um, and so this could be something people could look at as as a maintenance kind of thing to prevent um, issues with the heart like that. Well, if you're sleeping on the magnetic pad, you will prevent it. Uh, I have a whole new theory on what causes cardiovascular disease, and that's another day, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but in, in actuality, we do uh, prevent just sleeping on the magnetic pad we prevent cardiovascular disease and a lot of other diseases. We did an interesting study. Uh, it was 95 people, just what you call an epidemiological study, because uh-huh. we wanted to know, because we sped everything up, and we, uh, maybe we increased cancer. So we, uh, 90, 950 people in the study, and we compared the results with the Center for Disease Control for the age group. So, in other words, put all the 60-year-olds in one group like they did. Mm-hmm. And uh, we showed, and this is pretty dramatic, we reduced the new incidence of, cardio- of um, cancer dramatically. And uh, because it was not a big enough study, they wanted uh, 5,000 people in the study. We couldn't publish it. They said that this was just of interest, but you prove it. All you've done is proven that you didn't cause it. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah. yes, we do uh, uh, help people prevent cancer. Yeah, that's um, yeah. I, it's probably better that the study didn't go because, gosh, if you start getting publicity for that, they may, that may not be a good thing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we had it independently done, so it was you know it was all legitimate, but it was it reduced the incidence of cancer dramatically. Wow. 
Wow. And so that, that would probably be good for people that have had cancer and don't want it to come back or they want to prevent it um, altogether. Yeah. Mm, that's interesting. So are you going to consider you, doing... It, see, there's another study we did. Uh, the last study we did was on free radicals and, and the, um, the preliminary study on that was done by Norm Sheely, and he found that women sleeping on the magnetic pad uh, at night had 80% less free radicals in their bloodstream at 3 o'clock in the afternoon the day after even. Now, why why so, was it relegated to women? Wouldn't men have the same thing? Well, <laughs> it gets, goes to hormones. Uh -huh. And his measurement then... Uh, was not accurate with men because they were producing more testosterone. Okay? Uh, I see. Which is a good thing, okay? Right. <laughs> you got to have the testosterone. Yeah. and uh, but So then we did a uh, large study, 104 people, in just 20 minutes on the magnetic pad. This is the strongest one now. This is uh, what we call the super pad, the one that you'd use in your home. Uh-huh. In 20 minutes, we reduced the new incidence of free radicals in, no, this is in the expired air. We were measuring aldehydes, okay? And it reduced them by an average of 5%, and those who had less than uh, five amalgam fillings by 9%. Mm. So that uh, gives you a little idea. It's very rapid. The benefits begin, and, and it's free radicals which cause disease in your body primarily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had and a lot of people talk causes about this. such as viruses and, and bacteria, and you know the mm -hmm. whole thing. But the the big the big diseases like cancer and cardiovascular disease uh, have a lot to do with free radicals. Okay. Now, uh, Dr. Dean, are you planning on, are you guys going to be doing any um, any uh, mattress pads that are stronger? Are you considering doing stronger mattress pads, or is, is there any? No. Uh, the most efficient magnetic pad we have is the, is the Super, and uh, when you add more magnets to that, you, you can add another Super on top of it, and you only get about 50% increase. So it, it's a... Uh, you have to understand how magnets work, and so you don't. It doesn't keep getting stronger and stronger. If you have an area in between the magnets where the magnetic field can leak back around, they call it bleed back, uh -huh. and then you lose considerable. So that's about the most efficient we can do is the uh, super, and then uh, we've made some stronger ones, but the the economics of it are just aren't there. Yeah, it's too and expensive. It, uh, they might just as well go to one of our clinics and have the very powerful magnetic field, you know, 5,000 gauss, uh -huh. and uh, have speed healing there if they, if they want more power. So you have clinics around? We have one in Toledo, one in, in Tucson, Arizona, and one in just south of Seattle at Tukwala there. Oh, really? So they can people can contact you on your website and find out where your clinics are? That's, that's right. Great. Wow. Are they well, that's, that's a different website. That's, uh, uh, you, want, you want that website? Sure, for, sure. Uh, they can get into that. It's uh, www.amri, then a dash, okay. then I-N-T-L okay. dot com. So it's a m as in Mary a m r i dash i n t l dot com. Right, that stands for Advanced Magnetic Research Institute International. Oh, okay. cool. Okay, that's great. Gosh, I think that's about all all I had for you. Thanks for for being on the show today, Doc. I really appreciate it. Well, it's my pleasure. I trying to share what I've learned. In Twenty seven years, I spent my retirement doing this. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's I'm your whole not, life, I'm right? Now, I'm, I'm now 80 years old and still going at it. That's excellent. That's so great. All right, well, thanks for being on the show. And uh, just hang on the line there really quickly. I'm just going to close out the show. I want to thank everybody for joining us and uh, for checking out this show and learning more about magnetism and the work Dr. Dean Bonley's doing. Uh, his website is magneticosleep.com. And you can go through our link if you'd like uh, at extremehealthradio.com slash 491. 
you can check that out and learn more about what they have going on over there for you and um, see if it might help you and help your sleep. So if you enjoyed the show, please share it with your friends. We would appreciate that. And so would Dr. Dean. That way your friend can learn more about all of this information about magnetism and things like that. So we would appreciate that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of everything we have going on. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next episode. My name is Lee and I'm 41. I've been using One World Wave for two and a half years now. I suffered a bulged L4 and L5 disc from a car accident three years ago. And since that time, I've been unable to walk long distances, do any minor lifting or just normal activities with my children without having severe back pain. Since I've started using One World Way, I've been able to walk more, engage in activities with my children and have less lower back pain. One World Way has helped me regain back my strength, confidence and have a healthier life. I've noticed a weight loss of about 20 pounds, my A1C dropped two points and I have more energy now. One World Way has helped me regain back my life. 10% of the protein content of every cell is supposed to be glutathione and when it lacks glutathione, the cell rapidly dies. One World Way is non-denatured, frequency encoded whey protein. We believe our frequency encoding epigenetically awakens your cells to produce more energy and protein. Click on the One World Way banner ad right here at ExtremeHealthRadio.com. That's ExtremeHealthRadio.com. Well, there you go. Episode, let me make sure I get this correct here so I get it right. So if you want to check out the website for this particular show, yep. Episode 491. So um, this particular show will be at ExtremeHealthRadio.com forward slash 491. So all you have to do is remember 491 and you can go and listen to the uh, show or get any of the links um, uh, that are available at episode 491. So um, so what do you guys think? Dr. Dean Bonley, what do you think about um, what he was saying? If, he's, if, if what he's saying is correct, um, there's some incredible ramifications of everything that he was saying. Um, I haven't done any studies, obviously, because I don't spend my time studying magnets or magnetism. Um, but all we can do is we just sort of talk to the people that do do the studies. And so, um, I just think it's, it's important to, to look at this information and see if there's something there. Um, I did bring up that website, um, the, the study, uh, magnets and blood flow to him. And, and I think what he was saying was that, um, it, it mattered. Um, very much so what kind of magnet they used because the the website was saying that magnetism was decreasing blood flow. I think they said by 30%, which would be a bad thing, right? You wouldn't want that. But he was saying they were probably using the bipolar field magnets. Um, so a lot of people make claims, you know, a lot, a lot of people um, make a lot of claims about a lot of products and, you know, it's really challenging to know. So Um, all we can do is listen to both sides, you know, talk to, um, or listen to a show like this and then do some research. And if you find competing evidence that is uh, contrary to what Dr. Bonley was saying, then, you know, that's cool. At least you've done some research and you know, some information that maybe other people don't know. And, um, and you can make a decision based on that. Um, I don't know, um, about everything that he was saying. Um, but I, you know what? I, I tend to think there's something within me that thinks there's something to what he's saying. And this is completely unscientific, what I would say here, but there's something that I, I resonate with because we are magnetic and we are electrical and we do have components to our intracellular makeup that, that aren't physical that exists more of on a quantum level. And so I'm wondering, do magnets affect all of that stuff? Uh, one of the things I wanted to get let you guys know about too um, was we talked about heavy metal chelation. And I think he calls it, let's see. Yeah, he calls it magno chelation. Um, and a couple of doctor friends of mine have his magnetic mattress pads and they claim that it works very well for this. And they do heavy metal blood st- tests and things like that. Again, this is just information from other people. They could be lying to me, but there's no reason to think they would be lying to me. But again, it's third party information from somebody else, right? So, um, um, so, oh, here's what I wanted to tell you guys about, um, uh, heavy metal chelation. Look in, if you guys are dealing with heavy metal, um, chelation issues, look into the work of Dr. Andrew Cutler. Uh, he's sort of the foremost. We're going to get him on the show and we've been going back and forth with him for probably a couple of years. Um, and we just, he's been busy. We've been busy. So, 
but we're going to get him on the show and we're going to talk about chelating heavy metals. He's got a whole entire protocol. It's Dr. Andrew Cutler. And there's also another doctor too that I want to let you guys know about, uh, Dr. Jerry Tennant, T-E-N-N-A-N-T. And he's got a device called the Biomodulator. I don't know anything about it, which is one of the reasons why I want to have him on the show to discuss uh, what he's doing. But he's saying everything is voltage. Healing, his tagline is healing is voltage. So there's some sort of electrical potential and electrical energy that's that's uh, happening that we maybe we can't really quantify or study yet. Maybe we can't, you know, maybe we don't have the scientific testing that's detailed or accurate enough yet to be able to understand this. But he's got something called the biomodulator. And um, like I said, I don't know what it is or, or how it operates or the science behind it or anything like that. But um, he's, he, his whole work is based on the fact that healing is voltage. So that's another resource. We're working on getting him on the show. We've been contacting him for a couple of years too. Man, these people are just busy, busy, busy. Um, and it's challenging to get a hold of these people. But uh, we are going to have Dr. Andrew Tennant on the show. Is he a doctor? Doctor? I don't know if he's a... No, not. Dr. Andrew Cutler and Jerry Tennant, I think is his name. He may be a doctor. I'm not sure. It's funny when people ask you if people are doctors or not. I get that question a lot when we, I tell people about the shows that we do. And they say, oh, is so-and-so a doctor? Oh, you know. And it's it's so funny because in my mind, if someone's a medically trained doctor, they're, I'm immediately less likely to believe them you know but if someone just is passionate about doing research like you know nikola tesla or you know these these people throughout history who just have this insane desire to just study and research and to do experiments you know i love talking to people like that and if someone's a medical doctor i just think oh man they're they're just whatever they say is going to be outdated it's just going to be you know, manipulated by big pharma on, and all that stuff. Um, and the other person that I wanted to turn you guys on to is Dr. Jack, or yeah, Dr. Jack Cruz. He's been on our show a couple of times. I need to reach out to him again. Um, he's willing to be on, uh, on a monthly basis. Um, and I just, I have to get, get back with him. You guys loved that show. I think it was episode 466. Um, if I, if my memory is correct, I think it was episode 460 or 466. Dr. Jack Cruz, what you can do is um, go to our archive section and go to that page and then do a control F on your keyboard. Uh, and, and it shouldn't matter what browser you're using, Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer. If you do control F or maybe it's command F or something like that and just search for a guest name, um, that works. Or what I do a lot too is I just do, I'll go to Google and I'll type Extreme Health Radio uh, space and then a subject matter or a, a doctor's name uh, to see if they've been on the show. And that's how, because sometimes, you know, with 490, what is this, 491? Is that correct? Let's see. Yep. With 491 shows, I forget entire conversations. And even if we've had certain guests on, so it's pretty, um, it's pretty crazy. So that's a good way to, uh, to, to know if someone's been on our show or not, but yeah, we're going to get him, Dr. Cruz. So Dr. Cruz was on episode 466 and he uh, really, really impacted my thoughts about light, blue light, full spectrum lighting, and how light affects our disease uh, or the disease process in the human body as well as um, our overall health and vitality. Um, and I think personally that it's a huge deal this whole light situation. People are now using those chicken lights, red red lights, near infrared lights on the body to heal. Um, people are blocking blue light. I, I I suspect. You know, I would I would suggest go over to Facebook and follow Dr. Jack Cruz. And he, and what you can do is when you hit follow, uh, there's a little down arrow somewhere near there, and you can select see first. And if you want to keep up to date on everything that he's doing, you can do that with us too. If you want to follow us on Facebook, we post all kinds of cool stuff on Facebook. Um, but if you click see first, you'll see all, you'll make sure to see all of his posts and he posts a lot. He posts like, um, probably geez, maybe eight, eight or nine times a day, but it's all great stuff. And, uh, I mean, we post a lot too. We post about every four or five hours for something health related. Um, so, and also our past shows and stuff like that too. So you can, um, if you want to do that with us, you can do that as well. But when you follow Jack Cruz, you'll start understanding this impact of light on the body. And oh my gosh, I suspect it's one of the things that's that's causing us to 
our genes to, um, you know, for us to have genetic, you know, gene, gene issues and, and genetic diseases, um, or degenerative diseases where our, our genes are literally being, you know, degened. They're literally falling apart. And, uh, and I, I suspect it has a lot to do with, our lifestyle and light and things like that. So he is a big fan of the Dr. Jack Cruz of these Magnetico sleeping pads. Um, and I'm curious about what you guys think about what Dr. Bonley said about the grounded bed sheets. I, for one, am a big fan of them. Um, and we've tested all kinds of testings here at our house and I feel great on them. Um, and, so I think with the grounded bed sheets, it's just like everything else. Saying a grounded bed sheet or saying even a magnetic mattress pad or any of these things, saying that they are going to be, they are either the very thing that's going to help you overcome disease or help you feel better, or they're going to be the thing that causes problems. I think it's, it's like saying somebody should not eat meat, right? It's like saying somebody uh, should be, you know, should avoid meat. Right, and so that's such a generalized statement, right? What are you talking about? Organ meats? Are you talking about cooked meats? Are you talking about seared meats on the on the barbecue where the where the flame hits the meat? Are you talking about eating raw meat? Are you talking about eating raw organ meat? Are you talking about meat that's coming from grass fed cows? Are you talking about organic meat? Are you talking about um, you know meat coming from animals that are they're eating high quality? Uh, grasses and and uh, treated humanely. Are you eating? Are you talking about eating meat in combination with other meals? Like, what does it mean to just not eat meat? You know. So, you know, when someone says a blanket statement like that, I think it's important to really you know break the language down and say, hey, hey, okay, this is a very this is a very generalized statement you're making. So let's let's get to the to the real issue and define terms and figure out what you're saying. Because to say not eat meat, to say that magnetic mattress pad is going to be the thing that changes your life. And, and, you know, I mean, that's, that's a whole study. You know, maybe, maybe you live in an environment where they wouldn't be good or maybe they would be good or maybe. So the same goes true, I think, with any product, with any dietary platitude, with uh, the grounded bed sheets. I think you have to do your own testing and not, not really, you know, you can take what other people say, uh, but do your own testing, you know, and see how they feel for you. Um, and so, so, um, yeah, so I'm just curious what you guys think about what he said about the grounded bed sheets, um, what he has to say about magno chelation. Um, and, uh, what else did we talk about? Oh, metal plates in the body. That's a contraindication, but, uh, definitely interesting stuff, right? Definitely very, very interesting guy. Um, yeah. So if you guys are interested in, uh, the magnetic, uh, sleeping pad, uh, just go to extremehealthradio.com slash 491 and there'll be a link there on that page and you can check it out there. Um, so I think that's about it, right? I think we covered a lot in this show and I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was uh, definitely interesting. Um, definitely, definitely something that um, is worth looking into, I think, um, whether you get one or not. In fact, I just ran into a... Um, uh, listener of the show uh, last week at the health food store and he was saying that he had purchased the uh, Magnetico sleeping pad. He says he feels great. He says he feels amazing on it um, and he loves it. And He bought one, gosh, maybe I think he said like four or five months ago and um, he said he just absolutely loves it. So who knows? Um, it was cool running into someone. Uh, we rarely run into people in public um, just because so many people are, there's so many people out there in the world today but um yeah so for what it's worth uh this was episode 491 if you want to go to extremehealthradio.com slash 491 thank you for your support on amazon this holiday season or anytime really and thank you for buying through and bookmarking our amazon link and using the amazon link to make purchases there anytime you do it doesn't have to be health related uh, but you do have to go through our link either our link on the website or the link in your bookmark uh, when you make a purchase there and that helps keep the show free. So you guys are really cool. Um, that is such a great way. If you're looking for a way to support us, but you don't really have any money to, you know, um, donate on a monthly basis or anything like that. Um, a lot of people do do that. They, um, set up a, a, a monthly payment on PayPal or on Patreon and it just takes a couple minutes to set up and, uh, 
for those of you that do that, we thank you so much for that. That is so, so incredible. Um, it feels so good to know that we are, our work is helping people and um, affects you to the point where you would be willing to take a couple minutes out of your day to set up a, an account like that. Actually, on Patreon, only, if you have Facebook, it takes only about a couple minutes to do. But um, just to know that our work is helping you um, to the extent that you would take time out of your day to set that up and to donate, you know, five bucks a month or a dollar a month or something is it makes me feel good. It makes me feel like we're doing the right thing and we are, um, I don't know, just, just doing what we're supposed to be doing and helping people. And that, that makes me feel good. But if you don't have the, the desire or the funds to do that, no worries. Um, you don't have to do that at all. All you have to do is just listen to the show and, um, become empowered. And, um, and that's all we really want to do. Um, your support just helps us to continue to do that. That's all. Um, uh, but if you do make regular purchases on, purchases on Amazon, it's a cool thing to do to click through our link before you make a purchase and that helps us and that's awesome and we appreciate that um and also thank you for visiting our store from time to time we're adding new products on a weekly basis now um all the time uh, high quality products that i think are going to really really um enhance your health and stuff you're not going to find anywhere else and so we're really proud of the products that we have in our store and stand behind them and um so much so that we uh, refer you guys to them so um, thank you for checking out our store. Uh, we've got all kinds of cool stuff on there. So thank you for that. Um, and lastly, and not, and not leastly, thank you uh, if you've ever shared our show to your Facebook friends. Um, that is huge. That is very, very huge. And we thank you for that. That is awesome. Um, and that helps us. Um, so that's, that's a free thing that you can do. And the more of you guys that share the show, uh, the more it helps us. And, uh, and not just that too, but really ultimately we want to help awaken people and let people know there's options out there for healing. Um, you know, it breaks my heart when people, um, think that the only way to heal is through drugs, surgery or medication or pharmaceutical drugs or, or, uh, chemotherapy and radiation. Gosh, that just makes me so sad when people just don't know when they don't know there's other options out there. Um, and, and, and they don't know that you can prevent most all disease by diet and lifestyle and mindset and spiritual practice and, living a nice clean life and having fun and, and you know, it's, um, so ultimately, you know, when you share our show, yes, it helps us. Yes. It helps the guests too. And yes, it's cool that you, that your friends will be able to, um, you know, know that you are someone who is on the path of self-improvement. But ultimately when you share our show, I, I'm just excited that, um, other people can, can learn from the guests that we have on and hopefully maybe from some of the things that Kate and I share. So, um, that's what it's all about. Putting good work into the world and hoping people wake up and doing the best that I can do, um, to help aid in the awakening of mankind. And we all have our part to play, you know, we all have our part to play in this world and, and how, in the direction of the world, um, that we go. And so when you think about it as, um, as the world, is the world being almost like a creation of your own. And in the same way that you would look at like, you know, if you're a potter and you're making something or if you're an artist and you're making something, you can make it however you like. And we all, our impact on the world is, is our way of shaping a new world and bringing a new world into existence. And we do that through the associations we have, through sharing good, empowering information, whether it's our podcasts or other people's podcasts on to your friends and sharing good information, empowering information is going to help people. That's what helps change the world and helps people start thinking about things in a brand new way. Uh, and that's what it's all about. And when we start doing that, we start realizing it with, that we've most likely been lied to by every institution, every governmental agency, uh, every news media outlet. We've been lied to on every single level. And when you start realizing that, you can start taking control of your own life. Um, and one area of your life that, that is a great area to start with is your health. And that's what we're trying to do. And so um, from health, it goes on from there to other aspects of your life as well. So uh, when you share our shows, that's what's going on, hopefully, with uh, the people that listen. So anyway, thank you, guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your ongoing dedication. Um, for those of you that have written in, we thank you so much. Um, it's just awesome. It's an honor to do this show. And I'm just so happy to be a part of your life and happy that you're a part of my life. Um, it's just awesome. It's good stuff. Good, good stuff. Helps us all along the journey, right? Of becoming better people, 
becoming healthier and becoming stronger and uh, affecting change in the world. So having this community is amazing. Oh, speaking of community, I want to let you guys know too, we are launching um, soon um, a, a brand new membership website community, which is going to be a, a paid for solution, paid for community uh, that you pay every month. Um, we're probably going to make it available too if you want to buy it like for a year in advance. Um, and that way you can get a discount. But it's going to be, uh, we're going to be partnering up um, with some amazing people. And we're going to be tackling your health issues and giving you access to uh, these doctors that will help you overcome your health conditions and work with you. And there's going to be a community there. And it's going to be a great place for um, a private place where we can share what's working for us, what's not working, the struggles and get support and protocols and um, get all kinds of cutting edge information uh, that's going to go deeper than the show, much, much deeper. So if you, that interests you, uh, you can go to, let me make sure I get this right. This show page uh, is extremehealthradio.com slash 491 and you'll get access. I'll put it in the um, the show links, uh, the sponsor links and you can check that out. Uh, the private membership community. So if that interests you, just go to extremehealthradio.com slash 491. Um, thank you for your support. You guys rock. We love you. Thank you for all your support in every way, even if it's just sending us blessings, just praying for us. Um, that's probably the most powerful thing you could do, actually, uh, on top of or um, uh, as opposed to, is that correct? Or just in the opposite way of um, supporting us on a financial level, like through Amazon and things like that. Just sending good vibes our way praying for us, helping us continue our work. That is amazing. Thank you, guys. You guys are amazing. Um, let us know if we can ever help, and we'll catch you guys on the next shows. And let me just give you a little recap. Let's see. Actually, I'll do that next time. I'll share this with you guys next time. Yep. So anyway, this was episode 491. Thank you. We love you all. We'll catch you guys on the next show. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat